A Kansas Jayhawk joins us now at ASCO 2014, and she is Dr. Priyanka Sharma. Thanks for stopping by. My pleasure. Exciting conference for you. You've got two poster presentations. Let's talk about the first one in breast cancer research with young women and chemotherapy. Um, yes, so we are excited about this, uh, this work. Um, every year in the United States, uh, about 57,000 uh, premenopausal women are diagnosed with breast cancer. And out of that, about 30,000 30, women are younger than 45, uh, thus potentially in childbearing age. Um, adjuvant chemotherapy improves outcome for women with uh, breast cancer, so obviously is important for these women to receive, uh, but is associated with uh, potentially um, life devastating side effects for some of these women uh, like amenorrhea and loss of fertility. Um, lots of recent publications suggest that um, fertility concerns and concerns about premature menopause are one of the very important things that young women with breast cancer cite uh, as their areas of concern. So keeping that in mind, um, we decided to look at our own experience uh, in young women with chemotherapy. Um, we particularly got interested in it uh, with uh, the emerging use of certain chemotherapy regimens that may be associated with less uh, episodes of chemotherapy-induced amenorrhea. Traditionally, um, agents like cyclophosphamide and topo-2 uh, inhibitors like anthracyclines are uh, known to cause the effect on ovarian reserve and um, induce premature menopause. Some of the newer agents like taxanes and carboplatin may not be associated with these types of side effects. Uh, newer carboplatin taxane based regimens have become uh, popular in the last five or seven years, specifically for HER2 positive cancer in combination with HER2 directed therapy. So that was kind of the focus of our work. We wanted to look at the impact of traditional chemotherapy uh, that includes a cyclophosphamide and an anthracycline and an impact of chemotherapy regimen that's devoid of either one of these two regimens. So we... And what did, what did you find? So we went back and uh, collected uh, information on 165 women uh, that were younger than 45 and premenopausal at the time of diagnosis and received chemotherapy. What we found that in women that received uh, chemotherapy regimens that incorporate either cyclophosphamide or an anthracycline, the rates of 12-month chemotherapy-induced amenorrhea were 42 percent, compared to only 6 percent in women that got carboplatinum and taxane-based regimen. On further breaking down by age, women who were younger than 40, uh, no women that was younger than 40 and received a platinum taxane based regimen uh, had uh, menses loss at 12 months, meaning all of them regained their menses by 12 months, uh, as opposed to 22% of women younger than 40 that received a regimen that contained either an anthracycline or a taxane. So this is potentially very important for young women as they're trying to make decisions on chemotherapy regimens and physicians as they're trying to counsel these young women to make right decisions to treat their breast cancer, but also um, uh, be aware of long-term side effects and future quality of life for uh, these women. The, the emotional aspects of uh, premature menopause are devastating for some of these women, not to mention the other long-term serious health risks with premature menopause like osteoporosis or early cardiovascular disease. So based on this data, where do you go next? So based on this data, at least for her to pass to breast cancer patients, when I see young women that haven't completed childbearing or uh, are contemplating uh, having a child um, you know, a few years down the line, and we're trying to pick between regimen that contain uh, cyclophosphamide versus not, this is something I keep in keep uh, on the table when we're discussing that uh, aspect. Dr. Sharma, thank you for sharing the information. Hopefully we can get you to stick around and tell us about your other poster. Thank you, sure. Okay.